So, this will give me, so consequence of this corollary that if I write d 2 of x y to be equal to norm of x minus y, x y belonging to R 2 and what is that? So, if x has got components x 1, x 2, y has got components y 1, y 2 then this is nothing but sigma mod x i square minus y i square i equal to 1 to 2, now x i minus y i square, right that was the dot product. So, this raised to power right. So, that is the dot product uh, is related to the norm. So, it gives you that this is a metric. I am defining d 2 to be equal to this d 2 of x y is defined to be the norm of x minus y like in real line the distance between two points you define as the absolute value of a minus b distance between right. Same I am trying to copy now and trying to show that how you can uh, how does one try to extend various concepts from R to R 2 and so on. Okay. So, what we have done is we have uh, generated a notion of uh, norm and using that norm like absolute value we have gotten this thing a denotation of distance right. So, this is normally called the Euclidean distance. So, this is called distance on R 2, but the interesting thing is let us go back and look at what we have done is in R 2. How does it change if I remove from R 2 to R n? What is R n? R 2 is a vector having two components. So, let us think of R n as a vector having n components. Okay. The dot product. So, what will be the dot product? How do we define the dot product? We can define the dot product instead of 1 to 2 we will have 1 to n right. So, that will give me the dot product and again dot product will be linear in both because it is sigma a i b i only right. So, all these properties remain valid the dot product has all linearity and everything. I can define the norm of a vector in R n by the same relation. Okay. So, this if I take it to R n right the same proof Cauchy Shor's inequality does not use the fact that you have got two components or three components it only uses the properties of the dot product the dot product is linear in both the variables and symmetric that is the only fact used right so using that Cauchy Shor's inequality remains true and Cauchy Shor's inequality remains true that means you also have the triangle inequality so the all the proof same proof everything is same instead of 1 to 2 summation 1 to 2 summation 1 to n if you write same proofs work Cauchy Schwarz inequality works and that gives you the notion of distance okay, in R n. Okay. So, now here is something interesting that is happening let us observe that I want you to keep track of here is real line and here is R n. In the real line we had the notion of absolute value right for every x belonging to r and here we have defined ok. So, let me put here 2 here just to uh, we'll later on we will see why that is. So, that is sigma of x i 
square i equal to 1 to n. If x has got components x 1, x 2, x n and that gives me both have the same properties. right? This also behaves like absolute value and here this gives me the notion of a metric and this also gives me the notion of a metric. Okay? So, that is the ordinary metric in the earlier line and here is the Okay. Now, let us look at something more. You can think of this x i square as mod of x i square that does not matter. right? Square of a number is same as square of the absolute value of that number. Okay. Right. Okay. So, here is something interesting let us define Let me put infinity below it. Okay. What is that? So, that is look at the maximum value of mod x i i between 1 and n. x is a vector with components. So, x is a vector with components x 1, x 2, x n. Right. Let us look at look at the components absolute values which is the largest of them. There are finite numbers so maximum of them. Right? Claim this also is it is also similar to absolute value meaning what? So, let us write what that similarity means one is bigger than or equal to 0, equal to 0 if and only if x is the 0 vector. Is that ok? Because if the maximum is 0, every other component is 0, right? So, all the components are 0. So, this property holds. Second, alpha times x is equal to mod alpha times right? That is also ok, because if you take components of alpha x will be alpha x 1, alpha x 2 and alpha x n. right? So, the largest of mod alpha times x i is same as largest of alpha times mod of x i. Right? So, no problem. Claim that this also has triangle inequality. Because mod, if you are looking at maximum of a and b, a plus b, that is less than or equal to maximum of a plus maximum of b. Only that property is required to prove this. Because the left hand side will be maximum of x i plus y i, that is less than or equal to maximum of x i plus maximum of y i. So, that is again obvious, right. So, so these properties are ok. So, we have Let us write d infinity x y equal to is a metric is a metric on R n. So, on the same set R n we have got two different metrics L 2 right d 2 and d infinity. Let us look at one more. Okay. So, uh, so, this was uh, one metric and this was the second one and let us look at another one, the third. So, how is that defined? You see, uh, how absolute value of the components are used to define something. In D 2, we were taking squares and adding and taking the square root. Here, we are taking the maximum of the components. right? Another one for x, x 1, x 2, x n in R n, let us define, let me call it as 1 
to be sigma mod x i. Instead of taking squares and then square root, let me just add the absolute values, nothing more than that. Okay. So, then let us check once again is bigger than or equal to 0, because summing non negative quantities equal to 0, non negative number sum is equal to 0, if each component each uh, term is 0 that is each mod x i is 0 and that means if and only if uh, x is equal to 0, obvious property by definition itself. right? Second, alpha times x. So, we will be multiplying summation mod alpha x i, alpha will come out. So, it is alpha times right. Again obvious property because in the alpha times sum, alpha comes out, it is sigma of alpha. So, third property, what about what will be this quantity? This will be sigma mod of x i plus y i plus, but mod of x i plus y i is less than or equal to mod x i plus mod y i by tangle inequality in the real line. So, it is less than or equal to norm of 1 plus 1. So, that again says, so hence I get a new, so d 1 x y equal to okay, is also a metric. So, we have got three different metrics on R n. Okay. So, let me uh, just write here R, R n. So, here is absolute value, here is 1 and then we had 2 and then we had infinity. Right? See how one generalizes things, we are just copying. What do you think should be the next R, R n, what should be the next thing, if I want to generalize? R to the power, natural thing in infinity, right. So, infinity. What, is, what does R to the power infinity mean? As a set, I have to tell what is it as a set. So, what is it as a set? One can say it is a set of all vectors with infinite components and that is same as when you say infinite components, there is a first component, there is a second component, there is a third component. That means, it is a space of all sequences. Instead of writing as a component dot dot dot, it is a set of all sequences each x n belonging to all the space of all real sequences, x is a set of all real sequences. Now, let us try to extend this 1, 2 and infinity to them, right. So, how what will we try to do? So, for x which is a sequence, right we would like to define what is so let me copy what was this thing here we took the component right and we took the sum right we took the sum in when it was 1 we took the sum 1 to n of each component sum up all the components so, sum up n equal to 1 to infinity. That should be the natural generalization, but as soon as one does that, you will end up into problem. So, what is the problem? 
this 1 to infinity sum, what does it mean? It may not exist, right? So, if we are done a series of numbers, you should understand that this is a series which may not be convergent, right? So, one cannot define for every x belonging to R infinity, one has to look at a subset. So, look at all sequences such that sigma mod x n 1 to infinity is finite. That let us call it L lower infinity that is a subset of R infinity. So, we cannot just extend taking the sum of all the components, right? That does not make sense. We have to restrict to those sequences x n such so that mod of x n summation is finite, right? For every x belonging to L infinity, right? One can define to be equal to sigma mod x n n equal to 1 to infinity. So, it will have the same properties, right? It is bigger than or equal to 0 and this will be equal to 0, it is sum of a non-negative uh, series. So, each term must be 0, right? Triangle inequality obviously follows because of absolute value. So, d infinity x y equal to is is a metric not on a r infinity on the subset l infinity okay Yes, mod of x n. So, oh, this is oh no, oh, oh, I have got confused. With, I just took it that way. So that is, yeah, it is one. We are taking the sum. Sorry, sorry. That infinity is r infinity. One and this is uh, also one. Yes, you are right. We are taking the sum of all the components. So d one. So, is a metric on L infinity. So, this is also 1. So, actually then we should not be calling it as L infinity, we should call it as that also we should call it as L 1. Okay. So, let us good. Thanks for pointing out that we are dealing with uh, this uh, L 1. So, as so, L 1 is the set of all sequences whose absolute values of the term summation is finite. Okay. Now, uh, you can now guess what should be L infinity. Right? So, L 1, you can define L infinity to be equal to all sequences such that maximum of i 1 to infinity is finite, right? Supremum exists with the infinite collection now. So, that exists. So, on this you can define to be equal to maximum of mod x i. for x belonging to L infinity. So, you see how smoothly things go on, but you have to put appropriate conditions. Okay. So, d infinity x y, you get a metric now on L infinity. So, that is x minus y infinity is also a metric. No proof, no change other than instead of saying uh, 1 to n, you have to go to 1 to infinity, same things essentially work. Right. 
Now comes our L. Uh, we should also have L2 corresponding to the Euclidean distance. So, what should be? So, L2 is the set of all sequences x n such that sigma mod x i i equal to 1 to uh, infinity square is finite. And whenever that is the case for x belonging to L2, define norm of x to be equal to sigma x i square 1 to infinity now r n to infinity raised to power 1 by 2. Okay. Of course, this will be bigger than or equal to 0, it is equal to 0 if and only if each x i is equal to 0, right. Alpha times alpha square, square root alpha comes out. The problem arises when you want to prove cauchy schwarz inequality, it is 1 to infinity. You want to prove cauchy schwarz inequality and then use that to prove your tangle inequality. Right. So, that this is 2 here. So, is less than or equal to okay. So, what one has to do? See for R 2 to prove for this property for R 2 how what was our root? our root was prove cauchy schwarz inequality and using that cauchy schwarz inequality we proved so this was proof of cauchy schwarz inequality and using cauchy schwarz inequality here we proved triangle inequality okay same root one follows to prove it for L infinity also or sequences whose squares are summable L 2. Actually much more generalizations are possible. Okay. So, uh, I think it is a good idea to prove those things because they will be useful for you later on also. You see, okay. In L 1, what were you were doing? We are looking at the absolute value of the each component mod x i and summing it up. Right? In L 2, we are looking at squares of them. Right? And it was realized that we need not do only for 1 and 2, you can do it for any real number between 1 and infinity. Right? So, let me uh, uh, define the problem and define the set and then prove for at one go for everything.